Listen, I really want to start with a sincere congrats. Uh, I really enjoyed this movie and it's so different than the things you've made before uh, because you've, you've done a little, some dark stuff. And this yeah. is a film for all ages and families. Was, yeah. was that your driving force to make it? Yeah, 100 percent. You know, I mean, like you said, you know, the stuff that I've done before, but I felt like I'd been sort of stuck in dystopia for a long time doing kind of, you know, dark stuff and broody stuff. And quite honestly, just as like being a critic of my own work, I realized that I didn't have nearly enough sort of joy and levity in my movies. And I wanted to sort of see if I can, you know, work those muscles out a little bit. And then this project came along through people that I'd been working with through the, the Charon group. Um, and I just thought, you know, it has the things that I love, which is the sort of world building and the, you know, kind of imagination. It has emotion an intimacy to it, a scope to it, but it had hope and joy and levity um, and still was kind of rooted in real great thematic universal ideas. And so I wanted to do something completely different and really happy that I did. One of the things that I have been told by director friends is that yeah. the VFX industry is kind of fucked. And um, this movie is a lot of VFX. Yeah. So how exactly did you get this movie done with the horror stories I've heard recently? But, you know, honestly, that was a huge, huge problem on the movie. There was a, it was a really, it was a much slower process in terms of visual effects. We also had a bunch of houses that signed on contractually to take on certain sequences. And then when I got into editing, turned them over immediately to these people, they held on to them for months and then suddenly kicked them back and said, we're not doing them, we're overloaded. I mean, it was kind of bonkers that we could even finish the movie in time in any reasonable amount of time because it's so complicated. But there, there were some houses that came out of this process as real heroes for us. And honestly, I'm going like and working with them again as much as possible. And then some of these bigger places that, you know, honestly, really failed us. Big, big time failed us. I've been talking to some people recently and it's amazing to me, like what's going on behind the scenes. And I don't think enough people realize um, just the problems that are going on in the industry with the VFX. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it's it's pretty crazy. And I had never had that that kind of experience before. Um, you know, you, you just sort of feel like when you're working with real companies and they're con contracted to do a, a sequence that they'll actually do the sequence. And, you know, you have your normal back and forth on whether or not shots are good enough and stuff, that's normal. But the fact that they hold on to things and then just like kick it back to you months later and then you're just left there with, you know, without any work done on something really complicated, you know, it's a it's a weird place to be business wise. And I just have to ask you, uh, I got to switch to something else. Just so we spoke for Constantine for the 15th anniversary at yeah. the Comic-Con panel, you, Kiva, yeah. Keanu and I. Yeah. Was it that panel that actually opened the door to the Constantine 2 stuff? How did this actually No, happen? I mean, it's really and I think this it's a you know, I can have a larger conversation with you about it on the phone. But, you know, it's something that we've been talking about since we made Constantine because we all loved it. So we've been talking about it, talking about it, talking about it. But uh, all the sort of DC because Vertigo is part of DC, that sort of like the control of those properties got complicated with Warner Brothers, with DC with JJ's deal, you know, all those kinds of things. There's a lot of complicating factors. So it was never like Akiva and Keanu and I having to be sort of convinced to do it. It was really trying to figure out how we can get some sort of control over the Constantine character again. And honestly, I think it was a little bit of the panel, but I, I believe it was Keanu's appearance on Colbert where he was asked what character he'd love to play again. And he said, John Constantine and the crowd went nuts and people finally saw that and went, Oh wait, maybe you guys can go and make the Constantine sequel. So yeah, it was, I think it was sort of a, a, a variety of factors. On that note, I need to stop. Um, I just really want to say a sincere congrats on Slumberland, especially with Thank the you. obstacles, you know, um, you. And, and we'll talk more hopefully soon. Okay, cool. Awesome, man. Good to see us. Talk soon.